Thank you all for viewing tonight's Planning Commission meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order at the City of Clear Lake Chambers on Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024 at 6 p.m. As a reminder, if you are participating via Zoom, please put yourself on mute unless you are speaking. We are currently live streaming this meeting on the City's YouTube channel and the Lake County PEG TV live stream YouTube channel. To begin with, uh, may I please have a roll call? Commissioner Smalley. Here. <coughs> Commissioner Inglis. I'm here. Commissioner Coker. Here. Commissioner Stewart. Present. And Chair Williams. Present. And we'll now do the please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, Commissioner Stewart, would you please lead? <coughs> I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America. America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. All right, um, at this time, uh, we will um, adopt the agenda. City Manager Flora or uh, Senior Planner uh, Mark, are there any changes to the agenda? No modifications. Thank you. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? I so move. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the agenda is approved. Okay, at this time, we will uh, go to public comment. Uh, this is the time for any member of the public to address the Planning Commission on any matter not on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city. The Brown Act, with limited exceptions, does not allow the Commission or staff to discuss issues brought forth under public comment. The Commission cannot take action on not agenda items. Concerns may be referred to staff or placed on the next available agenda. Please note that comments from the public will also be taken on each agenda item. Comments shall be limited to three minutes per person. Are there any public comments in the chamber at this time? Okay. Seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk, are there any on Zoom? There are no comments on the Zoom, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our consent items. Um, our consent item is the July 9th, 2024 Planning Commission meeting minutes. Um, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I so move. Second. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion by uh, Commissioner Inglis and a second by Commissioner Smalley to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so moved. Uh, it will be uh, approved for review and file. We have uh, let's see, no business items this evening, so we'll move on to our public hearing. Um, public hearing this evening is item number one. Public hearing to review and comment on the scope of the draft environmental impact report and to provide input on any potential environmental effects of the redevelopment of the 47 and a half acre site known as the airport redevelopment project. Uh, staff, will you please provide a report? Thank you, Chair Williams and commissioners. Uh, my name is Jessica Hankins and um, I am a consultant for the city working on this airport redevelopment project. Um, tonight I'm gonna to be giving you a short presentation on this project and the um, purpose of the NOP scoping meeting that we're, that we're doing tonight for the public. Um, I'll be providing a project overview, um, telling you about the purpose of CEQA and the EIR process and schedule for this project, as well as the topics to be analyzed in the EIR. And then finally, we'll take public comments and hopefully hear from the commissioners as well. First, I wanted to introduce the project team. Um, there is a 
there is a core project team here at the city um, who's working on this project, and that is Alan Flora, city manager, and Mark Roberts, senior planner in the planning department, and Dave Swartz, the city engineer in the public works department. Um, there are additional folks in the city obviously working on this, but this is kind of the core team. Um, we also have a larger consultant team that consists of Gary Price, who's been a contract planner uh, for the city for quite some time, and myself, we're working together uh, managing this EIR process. I am a principal with Yuba Planning Group and an AICP certified planner. Um, we also have a large technical team working on the various components and different chapters of the EIR. Um, those are listed there. I won't go through those now. So the purpose of tonight's meeting is to essentially to take public comments on the, what people would like to see evaluated in the EIR for the project. Um, so I'll first obviously need to give everybody an overview of what the project actually is so that you know what it is, provide an overview of CEQA and the scoping process, and then we'll receive comments from the public, any organizations, agencies, or other parties who are interested um, in telling us what they think the scope of the EIR should be. Um, some comments might include CEQA topics for analysis in the EIR, potential mitigation measures folks would like to see, or, or even project alternatives. The meeting is not intended to be a question answer session. Um, obviously, we can answer any clarifying questions that you might have about this process um, or the EIR or CEQA. Um, as well as the project itself, um, but not necessarily a, a back and forth uh, at this time. Um, comments kind of on the project merits are great and we wanna hear those, but those are really for the end of the process when the commission and the board is, or the city council is um, going to certify and approve the project, consider it. This is not a public hearing, it's actually just a public meeting, um, and there's no decision being made tonight, so we're not asking you to make a decision, just listen to the public. It's also not the last opportunity for feedback um, and hearing from the public, there's gonna be multiple opportunities for that along the way. <clears throat> okay, so first, the what is the project itself? Um, this project is called the Airport Redevelopment Project because it's sited on the old uh, Pierce Airport site, which was closed around 1994. It's on 47 and a half acres, and there are about 19, 19 parcels. I think most of those are owned by the city. Four are in private ownership. Um, currently, it's in use as a public works corporation yard. Um, and just a little bit of information about the location of this, I'm sure. Everybody here probably knows where it is, but it's in the southern area of the city, bounded by Highway 53 to the east, old Highway 53 to the west, and then the 18th Avenue improvements will um, cross through the site in the northern area. Um, I did wanna comment on the fact that this project has been envisioned for some time, since the 1990s at least, um, and it was further developed as part of the 2040 general plan process, which was adopted in 2017. Um, so at that time, the general plan has designated the site as commercial, um, and, and it's zoned commercial as well. Um, the general plan actually has a policy in it that speaks to the site in particular and says that it should be developed as a regional shopping center. So the EIR that was done for the general plan actually already evaluated this site for a regional shopping center. This project is slightly different. It has multi-use components in it, which I'll discuss in a moment. So we are doing this EIR to, to cover um, anything that's different in our project. In terms of how it's going to be developed, um, like I said, the city owns most of this property, so um, likely the city will build the backbone infrastructure first, that um, main line road that goes north to south through the site, um, as well as the, the east-west road through the center of it, um, as well as all the utilities. Um, and then the parcels will be built by individual developers, most likely, or individual property owners and maybe even the city, depending on the project type. So in this overview map that you can see, which I'll zoom in here in a second, um, right here, 
This is the northern area of it. The project area is bounded in red. So everything that is enclosed in red is going to be evaluated in the EIR and is included in the project. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a multi-use project. So up at the northern end, north of the 18th Avenue extension, you see some light yellow structures. Those are multifamily housing units and we're looking at up to 250 multifamily units. Might not end up being that many, but we're evaluating a worst case scenario in terms of environmental impacts in the EIR to make sure that we've covered all our bases in case um, people would like to come in later and, and build a slightly more intensive project than what's actually shown on the site plan itself. So I just wanna clarify that if there was any confusion because in some of our plans, we show fewer units than that, but we'll be evaluating slightly more units. Um, down on the west side, which is actually just adjacent to Old Highway 50 here, you see some orange structures. Those are medical facilities, and we're looking at up to 140,000 square feet of medical facilities and some parking areas in there. And then on the east side of the site that is bounded by Highway 53. The green shows, um, that's public open space. That's almost four acres of public open space. That will include a park, a plaza, pedestrian pathways, um, and other public uses. The pink that you see here, or the light red, those are um, a mixture of restaurants and commercial uses. This is the southern area of the site, it's more more of the commercial is um, clustered at the southern end. So we're looking at up to 400,000 square feet total of commercial retail and restaurant uses for the site. And that also includes, by the way, the 140,000 square feet of medical facilities, um, just in the event that, that those are not constructed and the entire site gets developed as a, as a shopping center. Parking, um, we've already done some preliminary work on that and it looks like approximately 2,000 stalls will be needed. So that's what's shown on the site plan here. Okay, moving on to CEQA. CEQA is the California Environmental Quality Act. This was a law that was passed in 1970 and it requires public agencies to consider the environmental consequences of their decisions before approving any plans, policies, or projects. And in this case, the environment isn't just bugs and bunnies, but it's also anything that's part of your physical environment. So it could be traffic, air, noise, um, public utilities, wildfires, historic buildings, those kinds of things. So those are the things that we'll be evaluating. Um, it also requires decision makers to disclose project <coughs> impacts to the public, which in turn obviously informs decision makers about what those impacts are before they make those decisions. It fosters interagency coordination and review and helps us to figure out ways to avoid or minimize some of the impacts of development. It also provides an opportunity for public involvement in projects. So under CEQA, there are, are three levels of environmental review. Um, the first level, which is not shown on this slide, the first two levels aren't shown here, but I'll tell you what they are. Um, the first one is, is an exemption, and that's if the project's really small or it's maybe a certain type of project that the state has decided does not require environmental review, like an infill project. Um, and so obviously this one is not exempt. And then the next level is where you do an initial study and you look at all the impacts and all of them can be mitigated to a less than significant level, so you just adopt a mitigated negative declaration. Um, in this case, we're doing the highest level of environmental review for this project, an environmental impact report, or EIR. Um, and so the, an EIR, the main purpose of it is, again, it's informational. It is to disclose a project's environmental effects, to let the public know, to let decision makers know, and then help to reduce any, any of those impacts, hopefully to a less than significant level. If with an EIR, if there are impacts that cannot be mitigated to a less than significant level, you can still approve the project, um, but you do have to disclose that it's still significant and then make some findings of overriding consideration, which could include things like the socioeconomic benefits of a project. 
Um, the other thing that an EIR does that the other levels of environmental review don't do is it allows the lead agency, which is the city in this case, obviously, to evaluate feasible alternatives that meet the basic project objectives. So we will be looking at alternatives to the project as well, and we would love to hear some feedback on what those alternatives should be tonight, if possible. Um, and then finally, the EIR does have to be certified by the city before approving the project. So, um, so, so, this, so you will consider whether it is adequate or not, and then make a, a recommendation to the city council as to whether it is adequate. Okay, so for, for our process, we're following the standard EIR process, but I do have some specific timelines in here for you. Um, all of the, I don't know if it shows up here very well, but in the slide, but all of the lettering that's in yellow is where the public has an opportunity for comment. So this is not the only opportunity, there are several others as we go along. So the first thing that we've done, which has already begun, is we distributed this notice of preparation, the NOP, that we're preparing and we're notifying everybody we're preparing this EIR. Please give us some input on what you want to see evaluated in it. That's a 30-day review period. It ends on August 9th. We're right in the middle of it right now, so we're on this second box over. We're at the scoping meeting. And then we take all those comments and all of our technical studies. We prepare the draft EIR. Um, and we, we um, anticipate that that will go through the winter of this year. And then we'll release the public review draft of the EIR, which goes out. Everybody gets to look at that for 45 days. And that should be late winter, early spring of 2025. Then we'll get a look. Hopefully, we'll get some comments on that. If there's anything that warrants changing in the EIR, we make those changes at that time. We can change, you know, <coughs> additional uh, evaluation and even make changes to the mitigation measures if we need to. We prepare a final EIR that makes those changes and includes responses to all of the public comments we receive. Um, and then that is probably going to be released around spring of 2025. <coughs> then um, we will take everything that we've done and bring it back to you in late spring of 2025. And we'll summarize everything, all the comments and all of the impacts that we've evaluated for your consideration to make a recommendation to the city council. And then City Council hears it and makes a determination on the EIR before they decide whether to approve the project. So that's the basic process. These are the issue areas that we will be evaluating or that we anticipate at this point at least to evaluate in the EIR. Um, aesthetics or visual resources, air quality, greenhouse gas emissions, biological resources, cultural and tribal resources, geology and soils on the site, hazards and hazardous materials, hydrology and water quality, land use and planning, noise, public services and utilities, and transportation and vehicle miles traveled. We do anticipate not reviewing two of the major topic areas under CEQA, um, just because there, we don't think there will be any impacts to them at all, and those include uh, mineral resources and agricultural and forestry resources. They're just not, not on the site. So the current opportunity for public comment, obviously right now, the scoping meeting, um, right now is a great opportunity for folks to give us verbal comments um, and then written comments. We love to get things in writing so we make sure that we understand what the comments are. Um, and those can be submitted by email to the senior planner, Mark Roberts, at mroberts at clearlake.ca.us or addressed, you can send it in the mail as well to the planning department or hand deliver it to City Hall. And I'll give you a um, website here in a moment. Again, there will be more opportunities for public comment when we come back with the draft EIR, the final EIR, and the Planning Commission uh, and City Council hearings. They will be public hearings, um, so those are additional opportunities. Um, right now, we do have the NOP posted on the city's website, um, but we will be creating more of a project website 
for this project so that we can have all of the project documents, including this presentation, um, the NOP, and then when we release the draft EIR, that'll be posted on there with the technical appendices so everybody can, can read those and view those electronically. It makes it a little bit easier. Those will be posted, I believe, under this website, www.clearlake.ca.us. Um, backslash 475, backslash priority projects. Okay, so um, we're gonna move on to the public comment portion now. And before we do, I just wanna remind those folks who are here in person and wanna comment that there is a sign-in sheet. Is it here or over there? It's out front. Okay. Okay, there's a sign-in sheet out front. Um, we would love to get your name and address, and when you come up to the microphone, you can also state your name and address clearly, um, and we'd love to get you on the notification list. Um, that's why we're asking for this information to make sure that, um, that we can notify you in the future of all these other um, opportunities for you to speak up on the project. If you are on Zoom, um, also please provide your name and address, and I believe you can use the chat feature to provide written comments. So a couple of guiding questions we'd love for you to answer are in yellow here. What potential physical impacts of the project should be evaluated in the EIR? You could make a statement like the EIR should analyze blank, traffic in front of my house, or something like that. Are there any project alternatives you would like to see evaluated is the other main question. And so just a, a quick reminder, I know I mentioned this already, but um, again, this isn't the last opportunity for comment and it's, and it's not the time necessarily for your, a discussion of project merits. Um, although we do wanna hear what you think about the project what we're looking for today is for the EIR consultants to be able to take comments on what should be in the EIR so we can start work on that. Um, so that concludes this presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions that the commission might have right now. Um, and we'd also love to hear from the commissioners on what you'd like to see evaluated in the EIR. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, um, do any of our commissioners have questions at this time or? Would you like to hear the public speak first? Okay. I thought this wasn't a question they answered. <laughs> well, no, but we I, I didn't know if that was the first thing right. I heard. Yeah, so no, you know. could put input if you have things that you would like okay. to have analyzed. I think I'll wait. So, okay, perfect. All right. Then at this time, I'll open it for public comment. Um, if you would, anyone wants to speak public comment. Yeah, that's fine. I, if um, someone else wants to come up while you're looking at it, if that's okay with you. Okay. Do we have anyone else? Please state your name and where you live. Kathy Davis, City of Clear Lake. I would like to see a traffic study done on Old Highway 53. Um, in the mornings during school time, there is a lot of traffic that gets backed up when the buses are picking up students from the um, existing housing that's already there. Um, and I don't know if you can answer it or not, but what type of housing are you looking at possibly going in there? Is that low income? No. That's it. Do you want me to? That'd be great if you could. Yeah. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. You actually covered questions that I had, so that, perfect. Okay, Mr. Hughes. Mr. Hughes, are you ready? I guess so. Okay. Come on, Dave, get with it. Get him killer. There's the sign in sheet, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one out there. I think uh, that's a duplicate. Dave Hughes, 2705 Old Highway 53. Um, I guess I just had a couple of questions. I mean, obviously, you're trying to get an EIR done to move this along. Um, but what if a developer shows up <clears throat> that doesn't want to do any housing? I suppose looking at where the housing is, you could eliminate that from a purchase. But things like the was it three acres plus of open space, um, you, 
you know, I, I, the developer might want to do more retail and commercial. Um, is there some flexibility that would allow more than 400,000 square feet? Um, and, and maybe I'm just throwing out the comment that could be considered during the EIR process. Uh, you know, I hate to have something move forward now that's, that's it. When we get a developer, this is what he's got to live with. Um, so I know I've sent other plans to developers in the past that were out there and the developers I sent it to weren't overly excited about the, 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 the project as, as shown. So um, maybe that would be my only question is maybe, um, well, I guess some consideration that changes can be made even after the EIR is done to some degree. Uh, maybe, maybe they can, so. Thank you. Anyone else? See what they're going to do where your, your old house was, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. All right. Okay, so Elizabeth Davis used to be uh, Betty Dittmar decades ago, and uh, we had seven and a half acres of that development there one time under Dittmar. Um, I just wanted to throw in since Dave, you opened the uh, topic of open space. <clears throat> Um, Mark and Alan both know that the six and a half acres that are directly east of uh, Highlands Harbor, I have, uh, they are available for sale and I do have a gentleman that's made a proposal that, uh, at any rate, um, there's waterfront there, 250 feet of waterfront and 250 feet on Old 53 and it's two rectangular parcels. So in trying to support whatever Dave's saying, if that if you need an option, I'm right there. We're right there. The estate, I'd like to sell it. And uh, four and a quarter for six and a half acres. Seems to be a good number by me. I don't know what it is by anybody else. So um, it's under Dittmar Davis. And of course, I've got the APNs and all that stuff. So uh, it's mixed use residential right now. And uh, we did have when Kiewit Construction put in Race Market a long time ago. We had Phil brought over. Um, actually, it was my husband's idea. He said, get him to drag that Phil over there and fill in that damn meadow and get it raised up. So Al Petrie was around in those days. So Elizabeth, you got to stop it. You're getting too close to higher than Highlands Harbor. Knock it off. So we filled it in, and there is a bottom area with riprap down at the water, and then the top area is filled in, and the sewer, by the way, there's two big sewer lids that are parallel on the east side. My dad was smart enough to say, raise those guys in when you when that was put in a long time ago. So anyway, just wanted to throw that in there. <coughs> Thank you, Dave, for bringing up the topic of open space. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. OK, anyone else like to speak in chambers? No? OK. If you like, I could um, provide a general response to Mr. Hughes's comments. That would be great. Thank you. Um, so this plan is designed to um, give us maximum flexibility. Um, what we're proposing uh, as part of this process is to do a plan development zoning overlay over the project. Um, so we have um, focus the site plan on what we would like to see at the site. And uh, we continue to talk to developers about this property. Um, they all have um, perhaps a little bit different intentions. So it's unlikely at the end of the day that the site plan will exactly reflect what you see here. Um, but what we're trying to do is make sure that we have this designed in a way that essentially this site plan does reflect the maximum square footage of what's really buildable on the site. Um, and so in, in addressing one of Mr. Hughes's questions, 
you would not be able to exceed uh, approximately 400,000 square feet of retail under this environmental document. Um, but we don't believe that it's really feasible to develop more than that on this site anyways. Um, the residential stuff at the top we think is a good fit for a number of reasons. It also does include um, some commercial square footage um, in some of those areas as well. So that would still be allowed even if the residential never happened. Um, you know, of course, there is a process to do um, some modifications to the environmental document if something entirely different was proposed on that area. But because of topography and other things, we think that this is... Uh, a pretty feasible layout. Now, I did shake my head um, to Ms. Davis's question earlier, but I guess they should verbalize it. It is not our intent to develop affordable housing at this location. This would all be um, higher density, but market rate um, townhouse type of development. Um, and then related to the open space, um, we do want this to be a destination type of development. So this is not just a collection of strip malls. Um, we could have done that a few years ago if that's what the city wanted, but we do want there to be vibrant um, open and recreational space here. Uh, if you had seen the concept plan, which those of you, many of you are here, came to the workshop we had a few months back, there's a different site plan proposed at that time, which included a pretty decent amount of open space. This design is intended to um, limit the amount of grading needed at the site so that the green space there is essentially the sort of bluff that goes around the area which is what we call the upper public works yard up at 18th Avenue um, and so if we're able to develop with this site plan we'd be able to use a lot of that actually as the open space we have some really cool design ideas um, to bring you know, sort of that alive and not have to do some of the um, grading work that was proposed with the previous plans to the same extent, which is basically flattening that entire hill off. Um, there's a number of geological issues there. It's some of the most difficult rock on the site and so forth. So I'm just kind of rambling here, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of insight into uh, where where this site plan came from. So, you know, there will be adjustments, I'm sure, um, depending on which developers selected or how that process moves forward. But it's our intention that when this environmental document is complete, there will not need to be additional environmental review. It'll be fully entitled. Um, a developer can um, move forward simply with um, grading permits and, and building permits after this is certified. Thank you. I appreciate uh, having that background on that. Um, okay. No one else in chambers would like to speak? Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, is there anyone on Zoom? There are no comments on Zoom, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you. Okay. At that this time, I will uh, close public comment and bring it back to the commission. Um, I will now ask... Uh, each of our commissioners if they have input that they would uh, like to share. Uh, Commissioner Smalley. I really don't have any input other than I can't wait to see the EIR because, you know, that, that interests me a lot, so. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Stewart. I really want to reiterate what Catherine Davis said. My, my main concern about this entire project is traffic uh, impacts. Uh, I, I just can't help but feel that um, no matter what we do there, whether it's this or something else, that there's going to be major traffic impact on old 53 there. Um, and I don't know, perhaps, um, There'll be some way traffic engineers can look at it and, and design it to where most of the in and out traffic to the actual product project itself is directed out 18th and on to new 53 rather than old 53. But even, even with that, with the amount of, of uh, possible future townhomes and, and retail, and plus not to mention the, the medical or hospital facilities, there's going to be a lot of people coming in and out of there. And I mean, 
Every single one of us already seen the impact of, of uh, traffic from the hospital at the stoplight at 18th. I mean, you can't you can't go past three or four cars through there without the light turning red because of the traffic from the hospital. So I think there's going to be a, a just a whole big bunch of traffic going on, trying to run on old 53. And as uh, Ms. Davis said, uh, at certain times of day, especially when school buses are there or garbage trucks or whatever, you know, I, I, I don't see that really working unless the roads widen out, but I'm not a traffic engineer. So anyway, that's, that is my main area in, of concern for the EIR on this entire project. Other than that, I think the rest of it's um, good and uh, will probably be easy. Probably be, uh, you know, the EIR will probably show that the, most of the stuff can be mitigated fairly uh, efficiently. Thank you. Thank you. I just agree with uh, Commissioner Terry. I think there should be another way in and out other than just the two ways off of old 53 and highway 53 for as large as the project's going to be. Thank you. Commissioner Inglis. Yeah, it, <clears throat> excuse me. I had a few. Um, it, um, something as basic as are we going to ever want to have an airport on this side of the county again, or is that kind of something that has flown? I, sorry. That, that was unintentional, <laughs> that, no. Um, uh, something as basic as that, because to rezone something for an airport, I mean, it has that impact being considered. Um, thanks for answering the housing stuff. Um, I noticed that it said below ground parking. I didn't know if it was subterranean or completely underground or if it's even necessary with 2,000 parking spots like on the surface. If that's a thing, um, I was concerned about shading for the parking lot because that's a lot of asphalt to put down. Um, I don't know if that even makes sense because I don't do this for a living. I'm volunteering to do this um, and asking questions that the public would ask, I would think. Um, so those, that's, that's a concern. Does it actually, I've read some articles about like when it can actually raise the heat in the area and it, I know it's really hard packed so maybe it doesn't make a difference. But I, I just wouldn't mind that being looked into. And also, uh, the stormwater runoff, because that's going to be substantial, especially in, in early stages of the project. Um, that has to be treated, is my understanding, before it goes off the property. Um, so I wonder how you're going to do that. It looked like the only drainage place I could see was like a good, sorry about that, was a good chunk of the, um, the open space. Um, so I would kind of be curious of how that, that, that's going to be. And I'm sure you probably have already got a lot of these answers, but I would like that to see something about that in scope of it. And um, yeah, that's plenty. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I too um, had con have concerns about Old 53. Um, that was at the top of my list and I was also questioning whether it was market rate um, or low income, so I thank you for that. Um, I'm wondering, I know that the hospital has installed the solar over the parking lots. Is that something that is part of the EIR is considering having um, the solar put over the parking to provide shade and, and the power, which I think would go to possibly help Absolutely. Uh, Commissioner Inglis's question about the, the heat from all the asphalt. Um, so um, right now, I think until we get farther into this and really uh, see the EIR, um, I'm sure that that will at that time bring up a lot more questions. But right now, uh, those are my main uh, points of concern. So. Anyone else have work good? Okay. If I could um, just, I mean, I know this is really back and forth, but just a lot of comments about traffic. You share just a few things. Um, obviously, you know, this is a, a big development, so that's a concern. We have our traffic engineer that's already been working on this. So, um, but in fact, um, in preparation for this day, a few years ago, probably over three years ago now, uh, we started working on a corridor study, mainly focused on Highway 53 uh, in coordination with Caltrans because they can really throw, you know, a lot of wrenches into the works on improvements that they want to intersection. So we were able to complete that. And so there's a lot of good analysis that was done um, 
as part of that that we can rely on for this project so that's all good and then you know although it isn't part of this specific project um, just in case anyone isn't aware I mean the, I think the biggest issue around school times at Dam Road is really the intersection just east of Highway 53 the you know like you're going up towards Walmart if you turn to Woodland right there um, and the city is has been moving forward with a, a roundabout um, at that location and so um, the environmental review on that's actually done we're doing actual design work and trying to finalize construction funding but um, that's going to be one of the biggest things that alleviates pressure at the dam road and highway 53 intersection um, when when that's complete so there will be uh, a lot and if you're just curious in the meantime be happy to share the highway 53 corridor study um, with the commission for you to take a look at there's short medium and long range intersection improvements uh, at all of those intersections there so thank you yeah okay um, if there are no further comments or concerns I'd like to thank you all for attending tonight's environmental scoping meeting uh, for the airport redevelopment project uh, if one does have further questions on the project uh, please coordinate with our senior planner Mark Roberts um, and he can work with our consulting firm on this. So at this time, we will go to our city manager, community development director, staff, and commissioner reports. City manager Flora, do you have a report? Nothing to report. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do any commissioners have anything to report? No. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, at that, this, then I will adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everyone, who took the time to attend and for submitting your comments and for those who are watching on Zoom and YouTube. There being no further business of the commission, we are now adjourned at 641 on Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024.